In this video, we're taking a look at the Chevron stock. Now, of course, during the pandemic, the oil companies have been really hard hit, and a lot of these companies are fighting really hard to get back on track and get their profits to where they should be. Now, if you are interested in investing in oil stocks, myself and Davi are going to be doing side-by-side -side comparisons in our live streams between all of the oil companies that we're reviewing on the channel this week. So you definitely want to tune into our live streams and you definitely want to check that out. And if by any chance you do miss our live streams, there will be replays available. So with that said, let's jump in and let's see what's happening with the Chevron stock. Before we jump into this video, I just want to ask you a really big favor. I need you to click on that like button and turn it blue because it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So if you can go ahead and click on the like button now. So if we jump into the charts for Chevron, we can see, as I mentioned, 2020 was just a nightmare year for pretty much most companies, but especially the oil companies. We can see here a huge dip off uh, for Chevron. And then, of course, they've done a little bit of a recovery over here and had another dip off again. And uh, obviously, we can see it's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride for them at the moment, currently trading at 101.63 a share. Now, if we come down and we have a look at the fundamentals and take a look at the financials behind the company, I think you'll start to see exactly what is going on. So the first thing is, if we have a look at that market cap, 195 billion, we can see that the price on the 10 year was actually 106.08 and currently trading at 101.63. So the current pricing is still way, way below where it was 10 years ago. And uh, a lot of smart investors are probably asking, is this a good time? Uh, to buy into these oil stocks well we're going to answer that for you by looking at the fundamentals and really making sense of it so very interesting though is the p /E ratio there's a there's actually quite a high pre p /E ratio on the stock which to me is pretty surprising um look at the profit margin a very small margin 3.09 percent they have 132 billion net equity which a lot of it has been used to see them through these last couple of uh, very difficult months. Dividend yield, surprisingly, still paying out that 5%, 5.13% dividend, which you know is leaving them with a net negative after the free cash flow and dividend uh, has been subtracted. So that is obviously a big area of concern for me personally. However, I think this was a very strategic decision from the company to continue paying those dividends because most people who are long-term stockholders are obviously chasing that dividend. And I think the oil companies really bargained it down and said, look, you know, we're probably going to have to keep paying dividends to retain our investors. And this is not unique to Chevron. I've seen the same thing in ExxonMobil and a couple of other companies. So this is definitely a decision they made to keep their investors on board. Now, coming and look at the year on years, we can just see what an absolute mess this pandemic has created. Now, first thing I need to mention, of course, these numbers are still positive. There are some really good numbers here. But of course, when we're looking to buy into stocks, we're looking for a three-year momentum trend. And specifically, we're looking for you know consecutive runways of green for us. We're looking for those growth factors in all of these key metrics. And unfortunately, none of them actually hitting the spot. So you know, even though they've actually managed to increase their free cash flow growth almost eightfold uh, from a year ago to the last trading 12 months, which is pretty phenomenal um, considering the environment they've been operating in, my big concern here is when you look at net income from continued operations as a um, metric against total revenue, you can start to see that net income from continued operations is considerably less than total revenue and expressed as a percentage, there definitely is an area of concern there. So coming to the 12 point checklist that I have now, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Um, but if you guys are interested in understanding my 12 point checklist, these 12 fundamental questions I ask myself before I decide whether I'm going to dig deeper into a stock or not. Uh, there is a video here on the channel. I'm going to link to it up on the link card. It's called the 12 point checklist. Go and check it out. It's a great video. It's going to help you make better decisions. And it's also going to help you understand our investing strategy. So the first thing I ask myself when I'm looking at any stock is, has the share price doubled since its inception or on the 10 year market? Unfortunately, that's not the case. The next thing is we're looking for companies with a P ratio between 1 and 25. And again, Chevron just isn't hitting the mark. We're looking for profit margin greater than 10%. And again, unfortunately, not hitting the mark. They do, however, have strong equity. So the assets are better than their liabilities, which means that they have positive net equity and they get a check mark there. Unfortunately, the dividend cost is not less than free cash flow, so they get marked down. Number of outstanding shares has not been going down for the last three years consistently. Total revenue is uh, obviously not in the right direction. Gross profit also not seeing that continuous three-year growth. 
same for operating income, same for net income from continued operations, same for operating cash flow, and the same for free cash flow growth. So unfortunately on the fundamentals, not looking good guys. If we have a look at the fundamentals, they pretty much got a 91.67 negative sentiment score uh, on the fundamentals. And that of course for me is almost a complete no-no. So <laughs> just looking at that, I wouldn't even dig deeper into the stock. However, because some of you are invested in the stock and may be interested where this might be going, the industry median price target is $125. Uh, return on equity in the red at the moment is a negative uh, 6% almost. Uh, return on asset a mere 1.53%. And I need to make it very clear that that figure is from September uh, 2020. So they're a little bit behind in their reporting currently. So that's the best figure we currently have. Based on these assumptions, we're looking at a price projection on our side of about 105 bucks. Now, that is a positive. There's about three bucks 37 in the stock, which represents about a 3.32% return. Now, ordinarily, when it comes to a stock like this, I would be saying, but guys, there's a 5% dividend and you should definitely consider the dividend into your calculations. And of course, that offers an opportunity for compounding your investment. However, when you come here and you look at these return on equities, you look at the return on asset, and you combine that with the fact that the uh, net income from continued operations is a very small amount in relation to total revenue. This is obviously a big area of concern for me. Uh, the one thing I really do like is that they've managed to bolster this free cash flow growth. However, I think that there is still an opportunity for this price to come under pressure. And I do doubt whether the dividend is going to continue at such a high rate unless they're able to drastically turn things around and obviously get their numbers right. So personally, if I was in the stock right now, I would probably be looking to exit. I definitely wouldn't be looking to buy this stock right now. It doesn't meet my personal criteria list. Having said that, there's, there's, there's no doubt about it that this is a good company. It is a good stock. It's probably going to be around for another how many years in the future. And so... There's, there's very little likelihood of them, you know, going into liquidation or, you know, disappearing. So I don't think you can do too wrong. The question is, when you're looking to asset, allocate your capital and you're looking at asset allocation, you've got to ask yourself the question, is this the best place for my money? And for me personally, I'm always looking for the lowest amount of risk with the highest possible amounts of return. And so this does not meet my criteria, and therefore I would not be investing into it. However, I'm interested to know what your sentiments are. If you uh, are bullish on it, let me know in the comment section down below. If you disagree with where I'm at, uh, obviously we'd love to hear opposing views. Let us know in the comment section down below. And like I said at the intro of this video, you definitely want to look out for our side-by-side -side comparisons. If you are looking at oil stocks, if you are looking at oil futures, you definitely want to pay attention to the live streams that we're going to be putting out because we're literally going to be putting these stocks side-by-side -side with all the big players in the market and helping you decide which is the smartest play to make if you are deciding to buy these stocks. Before you go, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel and join the Global Money Tribe. And because I know you need a little bit of extra motivation every month, I'm going to be giving away a signed copy of my book, The Money Secret, as well as some really cool channel merch. So if that's not a big enough motivation to subscribe, come and subscribe for the content because every single day we're adding absolutely great content teaching you to invest, save and manage your money situation.